Good morning, everyone. How's your Tuesday going? It's time to talk about the future just a bit more. So yesterday morning, I made a video where I started to open up discussion on the not, I, I, maybe not long-term future, but in, in NFL speak, it is long-term, right? In the NFL, you're never promised anything. You're not promised your next snap. You're not promised your next season. You're not promised anything beyond what you have right now. So Yesterday, I made a video talking about the areas of the team that needed to be improved significantly next offseason. So when I say we're talking about the future, I don't mean the future in like four months when the, the season starts. No, of course I care about that. That's going to be very interesting to see. I'm, I'm ready for whatever the 2022 season brings me. Uh, I'm, I'm ready for it all. Good, bad, indifferent. I'm, I'm ready. But... Really, the mind, my mind, is on what happens after. You're going into this season with holes on your roster that you you didn't fill, mostly because you didn't have the time or the resources to do it right now, because we're still pushing some dead money off our cap. Understandable. And you can't fill all your holes at once when you have as many holes as we did. So, you're taking this season as a little bit of a punt. And if you happen to win some games this year, then cool, awesome, so be it. Like, of course, I'm, I'm not going to be unhappy about that. But you're going to have to get a lot better if you want 2023 to be a special season. And I believe the possibility exists for that. 2023 could be 2012 all over again. Pete Carroll keeps calling every decent season we have, like, reminds me of 2022, 2012, excuse me. But no, 2023 could really have mirrors of that 2012 season. So if we're going to make that happen, we're going to have to address our current roster holes next year. Because as I said in my video yesterday, there are some areas of this team where it seems very clear that we are going to have needs to fill. Um, there are multiple different ways to fill a hole on your roster. And I thought it would be fun to go ahead and start with a look forward to see what we could do at those various positions to fill holes. Uh, today's video is going to be quarterback, and this is obviously the big one, right? This is the one that everyone's mind is on. Everybody, everybody who follows this stuff knows the Seahawks have a quarterback issue, and we can kick around with Drew Locke and Geno Smith for a year, but going into next year, you better get something significantly better than what those guys are likely to give you. Um, good place to start as any, so let's take a look. Alright, so the current quarterbacks on the roster for the Seahawks, there's very little to get all that excited about, and there's also very little money committed, okay? That's that's the upshot here. If these guys are not the guys, then you don't owe them a thing going forward. Drew Locke and Geno Smith are probably going to be on the 53-man. They are both free agents next year. You owe them nothing. If they do not produce for you in 2022 and 2023... They can be gone or they can be brought back for a Vetman Plus contract and they can be your permanent backup. Um, Jacob Eason, I think he'll be on the practice squad. He is under contract in 2023, but he's only on the hook for about $1.01 million, so just over a million bucks, fully non-guaranteed. You can cut him next offseason and owe him nothing. In fact, I think you can cut him this offseason and owe him nothing, so... There's no commitment there at all. If you want to keep him for a million bucks, there's nothing wrong with that. But there's absolutely nothing tying you to Jacob Eason. Uh, Levi Lewis, Seahawks fans are getting excited about him. But I'm sorry, guys. Until I see something very, very special on the field, I can't take him seriously. He's too small and he has too many limitations that are going to really, really hold him back. I'm going to have to see something very, very intriguing out of Levi Lewis before I can actually believe that he'll actually be a franchise-level quarterback. And again, franchise-level quarterback. That's what we're looking for here. We're not looking for a guy. We're not looking for a Tavares Jackson. We're not, we're not even looking for a Matt Hasselbeck. We're looking for the guy who can be one of the best quarterbacks in the league. He can carry a team, put the team on his back, and come through at the end of close games. That's ultimately what this league comes down to. You look at teams that have won Super Bowls and competed for Super Bowls and made deep playoff runs in recent years, most of them have had top-end quarterbacks. Tom Brady, 
Pat Mahomes, Josh Allen. Every now and then you get a Jimmy Garoppolo making a run. But for the most part, if you have the quarterback, you're good. So you look at Levi Lewis and you say maybe he can be Doug Flutie. Well, Doug Flutie was never a franchise guy. He was all right. He was kind of fun to have around, but he was not the guy who would put the team on his back. And then you have a Kaylee Ellaby, who um, is brought in under similar circumstances to Levi Lewis. They both signed three-year deals. Uh, the only difference is Levi Lewis actually has fifteen grand in a bonus, and Ellaby has no bonus. So I don't think either guy makes the practice squad or fifty-three man. Lewis gets fifteen grand if you cut him, but obviously I don't have a problem with that. It's fifteen grand under the cap, like insignificant. So I say there's about a, I'd say less than 20% chance that our future starter comes from here. Drew Locke, I'll give him like a 15% chance that he turns into a franchise quarterback and ends up being our guy. Um, it's not impossible. It's not completely unreasonable, but it's very unlikely. I'd say 15%. And then of the other four guys between them, I would give them all less than 5% combined. Like... Geno Smith has been around over a, almost a decade now. We know what he is, and it's nothing special. Eason, I don't think he can learn the playbook. I don't think he has the desire. Lewis and Ellaby, they went undrafted in a quarterback class that was heavily looked down upon by pretty much every team. So I feel like that tells you something about them. So sorry, I'm, I'm not on that wagon. All right, now let's look at some free agent options, and I, I want to reiterate something very clearly here. We are not trying to find a stopgap. We are not trying to find a bus driver. We are not trying to find a holdover. We're not trying to... We're trying to find somebody who has at least a chance to be really good for you. Even if it's just a small chance, I want that chance. So, no Jimmy Garoppolo... No Case Keenum, no Teddy Bridgewater, no Jacoby Brissett. I don't want those guys. Those guys, we've seen enough of them to know exactly what they are. I don't care if it's a tiny chance that you can be a stud. If it's a chance, I would much rather have that than somebody who I already know is just mediocre. So with that in mind, there are only five guys that I noticed in the free agency pool next year. The first one, the first two are the big ones. They're the big guns for sure. You have Lamar Jackson, who's going to be 27 next year. He's going to be a free agent. I'm not seeing the Ravens showing a lot of excitement in keeping him. So Lamar may hit the market next year. Now, in terms of his play, he's estimated to be worth five years, 200 million. But his value is going to be heavily determined by what he does in 2022. If he has a bad season, then that number goes down significantly. Now, for my part, I don't really have any interest in Lamar. Um, I, I think his best days are already behind him. The way he plays, it, it's going to lead to injuries. Like, he's already had some injury issues in his career. He's probably a guy who is not going to last that long in the NFL. So, I'm not interested in paying Lamar a boatload of money. Even if he doesn't have a very good 2022, he's still going to get paid big bucks. So... I will pass on that personally. The other big gun is Tom Brady. Uh, you would have to stack your team really, really well for him to be interested. He'll be 46 next year, but still playing well. You'd probably get him for the two-year $50 million deal he gave Tampa, where he just kind of comes in and kicks most of the money into the future and then never actually gets it against the cap. Eh. The next three guys are basically your lottery tickets, where they have a chance. Like, you can look at them and you can go, well... You can talk yourself into it, right? You can go like Baker Mayfield. Okay, he got drafted by the Browns. He needed to get humbled. He played injured his last year in 2021, 2022. His value is going to get crushed because it sounds like he's not even going to play. He'll be 28 next year. Because he's not going to play next year in all likelihood, he's literally looking at being the third string quarterback in Cleveland probably. You might get him for one year, $5 million. And it's the exact same argument with Daniel Jones. He was a guy who went... Uh, to the Giants, very high in the draft, clearly talented. But if it if 2022 doesn't go his way, it's not going to work out. They are going to move off of him. They're going to let him walk. And he's going to be in a very similar position. You're going to say, ah, he's not that good. But 
What if it was the situation? The coaching kept getting switched around on him. The the players around him weren't great. Like like there were all these problems with the Daniel Jones uh, experiment in New York. Maybe you talk yourself into well, one year five million. It might even be less, right? Like Baker and Daniel Jones are guys who are going to have so little value next year in all likelihood, unless Daniel Jones plays well, which possible. Baker's not even going to have that chance. But if Daniel Jones plays poorly enough to be let go by the Giants, then you could probably get him for $5 million and you can see if the change of scenery helps. Last guy is Taylor Heineke. Uh, this one's a little bit, maybe, maybe, I don't know. This, this one's not great. It was the best I could find for like a fifth option. But if you're being real, Taylor Heineke is going to be 30 next year. And if there was anything truly special with him, we probably would have seen it by now. But I saw some things from Heineke that I didn't mind in Washington. I thought he actually played well. I think he actually uh, showed moments of being able to put the team on his back and have a big game and put up big numbers. And overall, I, I don't know if I ever see him becoming an upper-end quarterback, but I think he can be like a top... Maybe he can be a top-12 quarterback. Uh, kind of dysfunctional situation over in Washington at times, right? So that's probably the best I can do. Um, he's not going to be playing this year very much, probably, because of Carson Wentz. If Carson Wentz plays the full year like he did in Indy, which I know sounds kind of weird, Carson Wentz playing a full season, but he did, uh, Heineke is going to sit on the bench for a year, and he's going to go into free agency trying to point to his old tape. That's probably going to depress his value some. I still say you're looking at like two years, 22. But Taylor Heineke is probably the best you can do after you get past the big guns and then the um, draft busts who might need a change of scenery, right? Again, I don't want the guys who are already determined game managers. Okay, but this isn't what you're here for, is it? No, you don't want to hear about free agents. You don't want to hear about all the money we're going to need to spend to get somebody good. You don't want to hear about the guys already on the roster. No, you want to hear about the guys in the draft, the rookies, and I got good news. If you need a quarterback in this upcoming draft, you're in luck because there's definitely going to be somebody you like. Now, this video is not for a deep dive. This video is not going to ex feature extensive commentary on this player or that player because, frankly, a lot of them need 2022 to determine what they truly are. You are going to see these guys get jerked around draft boards constantly based off how they play. But as of right now, with the information that we have, these are the guys that I'm keeping an eye on. 17 guys who, as of right now, reasonably project to be top 100 prospects. Now, obviously, some of them are going to fade as the season goes on, but others might rise up. You never know. Um, odds, like, you know, Brock Purdy is a great example. There was a point in time where people thought Brock Purdy was going to be a top 10 pick. He barely got drafted. Somebody in here is probably going to be the Brock Purdy, but these are the guys I am keeping an eye on in 2022 and hoping to have a chance at in 2023. You've got, just to give a quick rundown, <clears throat> CJ Stroud, Ohio State guy, going to be 21 when he gets drafted, super young. Very, very rare you get the chance to draft a 21-year-old, and that's what he's going to be. 6'3", 218 pounds, definitely going to go in the top five based off the information we have right now. Bryce Young is right behind him, Bama, 22, smaller guy, also probably going in the top five. My guy, my favorite, Will Levis, the Kentucky guy, he's going to be 24 when you draft him, so older, but it's worth it. 6'3", 232 pounds, big, top 10 in all likelihood. Tyler Van Dyke from the Miami Hurricanes, 23, pretty good height, 6'4", 224 pounds. Looking at like a top 20 pick right now. You got Spencer Rattler, now at South Carolina. Phil Jerkovic from Boston College. Anthony Richardson from Florida. Those guys, I think, as of right now, project to be first rounders. We got some second rounders. DJ from Clemson. Uh, going to be a very interesting guy to watch this season. Devin Leary from North Carolina State. We could get another North Carolina quarterback. Brennan Armstrong from uh, University of Virginia. And Hendon Hooker from Tennessee. I think those four guys you are probably looking at second rounders as of right now. Uh, I could see a guy like DJ completely falling out of the uh, draftable range. But as of right now, the potential is there. 
You got Hendon Hooker from Tennessee, older guy. He's going to be 25 by the time you get to draft him. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I already said Hendon Hooker. My bad. Uh, Grayson McCall from uh, Coastal Carolina, very small school, but there's something special there. Projects to be a third rounder right now, in my estimation. You got Cam Ward from Wazoo. Very interesting guy to watch this year for us Pac-12 guys. K.J. Jefferson from Arkansas State. Um, third round guy right now. Very interesting guy. Reminds me a little bit of like Cam Newton or Dante Culpepper. We've been talking about him a little bit in streams lately. You've got Tanner McKee from Stanford. Big guy, six foot six. Keaton Slovis. He's been around. He's currently in Pittsburgh. And then JT Daniels, now at West Virginia, Mountaineer. So... 17 guys I currently have my eye on. There are going to be more that pop up. Some of these guys are going to fade. But somebody in here is very likely to be your next Seahawk quarterback. So that's my current take on the environment for the Seahawks getting their quarterback next year. Ton of guys in the draft. 17 guys who currently project in the top 100 in my estimation. As of right now, I think all these guys project roughly top 100. So that's pretty good. That completely makes up for the free agency pool being lacking and your current options being not so great. So uh, tomorrow we'll take a look at another position, but uh, let me know what you guys think about quarterback. Is there anybody I missed? Is there any consideration that you think I'm not accounting for? Let me know what's up. See you guys later. Might make another video today. Probably see me on Twitch later either way. Peace out. Go Hawks. And yeah, that's my diagnosis on the quarterback landscape going into 2023.